In this lesson, we will see how to allow users to select a value from a list. And we will do this by using combo boxes. The first thing we'll do is to, again, go back here into the Data tab and we'll create a new entity. This will be a static entity and it will be the categories of our products. And we'll add a few records here. We want to have books, movies, music, and one last one, electronics. Let me just add here the entity to our entity diagram and this will be a category of a product so again we will need to add a new attribute to the product which will be the category ID and let's make sure these changes are sent to the database and for that we will publish Okay, and let's go back into the product detail so that we can edit this new attribute. And what we'll do, let me just close here this pane, we want to add the category here to the form. So again, let me add a container and a label. This will be the category. And as I said in the beginning, we want to add it, we want to let the user select this category from a list of values and for that we will use, we will use a combo box widget. And, and the combo box widget is a relatively complex widget, uh, it has many patterns of usage. We will show you one of these patterns, the most common one, and you, and you can find for more information about other patterns in the reference help of this widget. So what we want to do here is to set, set this property here, the source entity. And, and what we want to say is that these, these combo box will list, will list category. So we will select here the category entity. Now, by setting this property, the source entity, the platform will fetch all the records of this entity from the database for you, you don't have to do any of this, and it will populate this combo box with those records. And now that we've said that the combo box will have categories, we will need to fill in the variable property. What happens here in the combo box is that the values that you show here in the combo box like you see here, let me just go into the preview mode. So here we will see the books, the movies, the music and so on. These values are the ones that the user sees, but the value that we want to store in the database is actually, let me go back here into the, to the data tab, is actually a category identifier. This is the value that we want to store. This means that the variable property of the combo box needs to be a category identifier. And we will bind this again to the record property of the form and we will choose from the product, we will choose the category identifier. So in the interface, in the interface, the user will see the list of values. Here it will show the label of our category static entity and when a category is selected, the value that is stored in the variable is actually the identifier of that record. Now, this populates the combo box with all the records from the category, but since we define the category ID as a non-mandatory field, we want to allow the user to leave this combo box uh, with a blank value. So we need to add an extra value to this combo box. And we will do this, we will do this 
using here this special list. This is a list of options that appear on top of the ones we already have here that come from the database. And when this value is selected, let me just put here special value. When this none is selected, it means that the variable that we have here will be set with null identifier. Okay, so this is done. Let me go back now into the product screen and let me add here a new filter so that we can filter here the products based on category. Okay, so let me add here container to add this new filter and we want to filter by category and let me add a combo box here for, do, for doing that. And again here in the combo box we want to select category so choose here the source entity to be category. We will need a variable to store, to store this value and let's create a new local variable. This will be the category ID and let's bind this variable to the combo box and again like we did for the form we want to use here the special value to be able to see all categories all products from all categories in our list okay and let's use this category ID in our get products aggregate that we have in the preparation. Let's add a new filter. And remember, when we choose the special value, the category ID will be null identifier. So what we want here is to test either, either the category ID is null, or the product category ID must match the one the user selected. So again, here this variable. And we're set to go. Let's publish and test adding categories to our products and filtering our product list by category. Okay, again, let's go back into the products and let's edit here some of these products. I say that the Dell screen, this is electronics, save, and finding Nemo, this is movie, and that Harry Potter, this is books, and let's have a couple of other ones, Logitech, this is headset, this is uh, electronics, and MacBook Air, this is also electronics. Okay, and, and now let's test our filter. Let's say that we want to show only books. And, and there we have it. Let's say now that we want to, to, to show all electronics products. And there we have it. And let's say that we want to see products from all categories. There we have it. That's it.